Noni is, uh, you know, many people use many different products to support the immune system. Uh, this is a raw, I mean, a uh, wild crafted Noni freeze dried. It turns out it's tested really well for me, and it's a, it's a great product for uh, supporting immune function. It's, it's an adaptogen. If your immune system is too low, it brings it up. If it's too active, it brings it down. It does that. Um, but whether you use Noni or something else that you're more familiar with, uh, adaptogens are an important part of any cancer treatment program. Uh, this is just some of the data uh, looking at Noni, this particular Noni, um, and that's in your uh, data. So it's anti-inflammatory, it's an adaptogen. Uh, Ekamer, uh, there is a species of shark that lives around Greenland. Uh, they are very responsible. They only harvest no more than 1% of them a year. And these are alkylglycerols that are uh, processed from that shark liver oil. So these aren't... Um, you know, I don't like using animal products, but this is a product that really doesn't come from any plants. And it's a good, again, it's a immune system support, regulates immune functions. Uh, when you're testing for ecomer, if somebody needs more than six ecomer a day, it almost by definition says they have mercury toxicity. Uh, that's just what we found. So um, even if you're not going to give it to them, it's another way to kind of confirm what you already think from your clinical picture. You think mercury is a big issue for this person, and you start looking, you know, ECMR comes up with something that they test for and you dose it and they need a big dose that is that and doesn't do any kidney damage. Um, but ECMR, I have people use ECMR as part of their cold and flu protocol. You know, it's, it's got advantages for the immune system in a lot of things. Um, this essential detox, uh, this was a product that came from Dr. Bodmeyev, um, and it's a... Uh, AIDS and assimilation and excretion. You've got to tell people if you're, going to, if you're going to use this product, I tell people, don't be surprised if you have some really large allergies in the first days where you're taking this. Because people who are very light eaters will choke the toilet because so much stuff is coming out in their bowels when they start taking this. It's really kind of funny, really. Um, but uh, I just mentioned that because it really shocks them. But this is a daily detoxifier of heavy metals, parasites, environmental toxins. Um, and it has antiviral properties as well. Uh, there are hepatitis C protocols that use these <coughs> with vitamin C, um, which have been very successful at, at actually clearing it. Stress release, uh, these are products that are from sprouts. They're extracted, you take seeds and you sprout them for a little bit and they make huge numbers of enzymes. Those are um, basically extracted. Uh, for the months after Fukushima, American Nutraceuticals was sending all of this that they could make to Japan this uh, kind of the earlier iteration of this product. Um, the Russian people feel that there were hundreds of thousands of people who were alive today because of this product. Because again, they sent plane loads of it over to uh, um, the Ukraine after this. Um, so useful at clearing toxicity from chemotherapy and radiation. Uh, and even if you're not going to do an alternative approach to cancer, it's a great one to take. Um, you know, radiation therapists still tell people, oh, it's not going to make you sick. Don't worry, it's not going to we're just going to be doing your arm. Yeah, it's going to be your arm. None of your body's going to be in it. It's your arm in the field. And then they're sick as a dog, and they go, well, what happened? And they go, well, what did they tell you? Well, they said I wasn't going to make you sick. And I go, oh, just. Um, yeah. So even people who are in a more standard protocol, this is a great product just for, um, a great product just for lessening. Oxidative therapies, there are all kinds. This is a big thing now. Um, People looking, and so oxid, what are oxidative therapies? Things like intravenous hydrogen peroxide, intravenous ozone, um, all kinds of things that, you know, oxidation isn't necessarily a bad thing. There's a way that oxidation is, uh, kills bad stuff. And, but one of the cheapest, easiest, longest studied oxidative therapies around is large dose vitamin C therapy. And this, uh, Bill Curry and Gary Gordon kind of, uh, combine their brains to develop this product. Uh, Gary Gordon labels it as Bioenergy C. Um, this is the American Nutraceutical product. Um, all comes from the same factory. Probably not supposed to say that, but um, but because uh, American Nutraceuticals is cheaper. But, but basically, uh, do people know what a um, oral rehydration protocol is that you would use with babies and underdeveloped nations? I, I Okay, well, this, let me just tell you this real briefly, because if you take a cup of water, put a pinch of salt in, five pinches of sugar, you now have something that you can take with a baby with cholera or dysentery 
that's dehydrating and going to die, and it'll absorb the water because you've modified it. You've made an oral rehydration pack. And uh, what happens is that even a very denuded GI system that's been ravaged by infection will still absorb the sugar. The sugar pulls in the salt, and the sugar and salt together pull in the water. And so you can keep a baby alive with an oral rehydration protocol doing that. Why do I say that? Because what this is doing, the ribose together with the vitamin C, and this is sodium ascorbate, not calcium ascorbate. The sodium pulls the vitamin C very quickly out of the gut. And so I've had people taking 60 grams of oral vitamin C a day, and they're not, they don't have diarrhea, they're not, they don't have indigestion. So it's a way of doing large dose vitamin C without intravenous. And uh, so it's both cheaper and more available. Um, oxidative therapies, you know, again, there's uh, a way that oxidative therapies are supported even during conventional chemotherapy. I include this reference here, this particular journal, Orthomolecular Medicine. Orthomolecular Medicine is the group of people who were sort of students of Pauling's, and this is the organization now that follows them, Pauling, who won two Nobel Prizes and was a big proponent of vitamin C. Um, they devoted this particular issue you know, again, there's, there's ways that even doctors are prone to superstition. So you propose to someone, oh, you'll feel better if you're using antioxidants and taking vitamin C. And they go, well, my oncologist says that it will undo the work he's trying to do with the chemotherapy. Because, you know, it's, and, it, and there is kind of a simple minded to it. Chemotherapy works by killing things by oxidative reactions. And if you take antioxidants, it'll neutralize the chemotherapy. Sounds good, but it's not true. Not true at all. And so they compiled all of the data that looked at therapy, you know, papers that had combined the use of chemotherapy with extensive antioxidant therapy. And what did they find? The people did better, lived longer, more response to the chemotherapy, better tumor shrinkage. And so they put this out with all those references so you can, and it's, it's actually available online. <coughs> so when you're proposing that someone might not be so ravaged by their chemotherapy if they take vitamin C and other things, and they say their oncologist will visit, tell them to kindly go back to their oncologist and say, doctor, I know you wouldn't recommend anything to me that wasn't based on strong scientific evidence. Give me the paper that says that antioxidants are bad for me if I'm taking chemotherapy. Because there isn't one. There isn't a one. So it's superstition. And you need to help people see beyond that. So that's why this reference is in there. Um, most patients treated concurrently with antioxidants and chemotherapy did better than chemotherapy alone. 